In question number 6, a uniform chain of length L placed on a rough table with length L by N, N greater than 1 hanging over the edge. If the chain just begins to slide off the table by itself from this position, then find the coefficient of friction between the chain and the table. We just have a slight elaboration for the situation. Well, I would say if the total length being L, this length would be L by N. So this length will be L minus L by N. So, whatever the weight of this much of the hanging part of the body, that must be counterbalanced by the force of friction that is acting on this surface. So, I would say the friction force acting on that surface, it is mu times mass of this much of the part, it is L1 minus 1 by N into G, must be equal to weight of this much of the part, that is, this L will cancel out here this G will cancel out, this M will cancel out. We shall have this L will cancel out. Mu N minus 1 divided by N would be equal to 1 by N or mu is equal to 1 by N minus 1. That's our answer. So for question number 6, option 2 is the correct answer. Now let's see the question number 7. Question number 7 here a projectile can have the same range R for two angles of projection. If T1 and T2 be the time of flight in the two cases, then product of two time of flights is directly proportional to. What we know here in the simple projectile motion, if this is the range, it happens for theta, then it will yet again come down to the same point at 90 minus theta. So, if this being the theta for the first case, T1 I would say it is 2u sin theta by g, u sin theta is the velocity in y direction for the first case. Similarly, if now this time, this angle being 90 minus theta, so it will now become 2u cos theta by g. Just finding out this product of these two part, we shall have here 2u square sin 2 theta divided by g square. Well, this particular term is quite a known term. What exactly this one is for? It is 2 divided by g. Here it is u square sin 2 theta by g. This portion is actually the range of the projectile. So what we are having here, it is t1 into t2. It is coming out to be 2r divided by g. Straight away we are saying for question number 7, option 3 is the correct answer. The product of time t1 and t2 is directly proportional to the range of the projectile. Now let's take on to question number 8. In question number 8, a man is standing on an inclined plane of inclination theta with horizontal and rain is falling vertically with respect to the man. Now the man starts walking along the incline. Mark the correct option. Here the person will be moving along the incline upward downward. So first option it says if man walks up the incline, rain may appear to come horizontally. If the man walks down the incline, rain may appear to come horizontally. No matter whether man walks up or down, the rain can never appear to come horizontally. The rain always appears to come vertically. Well, it's a simple kind of vector addition question. I would say initially the rain was falling in vertical direction. And the requirement was that for the man, the rain should appear to come horizontally. Well, if this should be the vector that's actually being added with this original vector, then we shall have this answer to be a vector in horizontal direction. What I would say, this vector already was the velocity of rain with respect to ground. This vector we need to add here. So velocity of rain with respect to person, I would say, velocity of rain with respect to ground minus velocity of person with respect to ground. That means this vector is minus of velocity of person with respect to ground. That means actually person should move along this direction. Then only there is a possibility that the rain may appear him to come horizontally. So for question number 8, I would say option 2. That is if the man walks down the incline, rain may appear to come horizontally. That is the correct answer. Now let's take on to question number 9. 
In question number 9, block A and C start from rest and move to right with acceleration A is equal to 12 t meter per second square and acceleration of C to be 3 meter per second square. Here t is in seconds. The time instant when block B comes to rest after t is equal to 0 is. Method of calculation is very easy and the logic is at the time instant when both C and A shall have the same value of velocity along this direction at the time instant the block B will come to rest. So here A started with 12 t meter per second square and C started with 3 meter per second square. So at the time instant when the velocity of C will be it is simply 3 into t and velocity of A I would say it is A dt. Velocity of A it is 12 t dt. Integration of this part would be 12 t square divided by 2 or 6 t square. So these two velocity must be same. So 3t is equal to 60 square or t is equal to 1 by 2 second. That's the correct answer for the question number 9. So option 4 is the correct answer. Now let's take on to question number 10. In question number 10, in the arrangement shown in figure m1 is equal to 1 kg, m2 is equal to 2 kg, pulleys are massless and strings are light. For what value of capital M the mass m1 moves with constant velocity. This mass must be moving with constant velocity. That means it's not accelerating. So let's start from the situation of this mass itself. It's not accelerating. It means the tension in this string, this T must be equal to m1g that is 10 Newton. So is the tension on this part and the tension on this part that is T2 I would say it is 20 Newton. Here the tension is 10 Newton and this M2 being it is 2 kg. So acceleration of this M2 it would be M2g minus T must be equal to M2 into A2. M2 being 2 kg that means this is 20 minus 10 divided by 2 or it is coming out to be 5 meter per second square. It means this mass m1 is not accelerating. This mass m2 is accelerating along the direction with 5 meter per second square. That means this pulley must be accelerating in downward direction with 2.5 meter per second square. So acceleration of pulley it would be 2.5 meter per second square in downward direction and so is the acceleration of the capital mass here. So I would say now we got the answer for acceleration of capital mass that being 2.5 meter per second square. So m into a that is 5 by 2 must be equal to the tension that is appearing here. This tension is 20 Newton. This is 20 or capital M is equal to this 5 will cancel out. It is 8 kg. So for question number 10 option 3 capital mass being 8 kg is the correct answer. Now let's see the question number 11.